everybody. This video's featured creature may be the queen of spider wasps. Well, that designation probably should go to the gargantuan tarantula hawk, but the rusty spider wasp might be pound for pound the strongest. An adult female can overpower huge wolf spiders, then drag them over long distances and even up vertical walls. It's truly remarkable. And on my thumbnail, which is obviously a kind of a play on the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale, I actually like wolf spiders, so I'm not saying wolf spiders are bad. I mean bad as in strong, tough, etc. Once an adult female emerges from her pupil stage, she will seek out sustenance and also a male with which to mate. Once mated, she will then find a good spot for a nest. While both adult males and females feed on flower nectar, this wasp's larvae must feed on spiders, and that is where the gruesome nature of these creatures comes in. Once an appropriate spot is located and prepared, she will then seek out and battle a large wolf spider. Because wolf spiders are mostly nocturnal, they hide during the day, so her search will not be easy. If she can sting her opponent, and spider wasps are successful most of the time, then it is all over for the arachnid. It will become paralyzed for the remainder of its sad life. She will then drag the immobilized spider, sometimes over great distances and up vertical surfaces, as mentioned previously, to the pre-selected nesting site. The nesting location will either be a depression in the ground or inside a natural or man-made crevice. I've seen on many occasions where a nesting site is located within the exterior wall of a house, such as behind brick. A wasp will often take advantage of cracks in the brick or mortar to get inside the wall. Something else I've observed with these wasps while dragging a victim. They will sometimes leave the spider and fly to the nesting site, then return. I would guess that there are several reasons for this. One reason may be to make sure that the nesting site is ready to go. Another reason may be that the wasp needs to judge the remaining distance. And finally, I imagine she gets tired and needs to take a breather once in a while. I certainly would if I was dragging something that outweighed me by 10 to 25 times. These wasps have very strong mandibles. Just take a look at this close-up photo. Watch here as she grabs the spider by its pedipal. Once she reaches the nesting site, the spider is laid on its back, then the wasp lays one egg on the spider's abdomen. The larva will hatch sometime later, then begin consuming the spider. It will save the vital organs for last, so that the spider will remain alive as long as possible. Yikes. Scientists aren't sure whether the stung spiders are cognizant of what is happening, or if they are in a vegetative state. Are they aware of what is happening to them? Do they feel pain? No one is sure. I can say that I've observed these interactions on many occasions, and I've seen stung spiders moving their limbs, ever so slightly. However, I'm not sure whether or not it's just the spider's nerves, 
Take a look at these clips which I've sped up a bit to show the limbs are in fact moving. I hope for the spider's sake that it is unaware of what is happening. But nature can be very cruel. A lot of people might imagine that nature is peaceful and serene, and flowers and butterflies, but it is quite savage. If it were a movie, it would be a horror film. But I've seen these spiders, and many other creatures, consuming their victims while the prey is still alive. Have you ever seen a mantid fly eating a still living horse fly right through its eye? Yikes. And I'm not certain how long it takes for a spider wasp larva to consume its prey, but I imagine it would be weeks. Once the larva eventually consumes the spider, it will enter into a pupil stage with a very low metabolic activity and transformation in body form. When the pupil stage is complete, usually the following year, the adult wasp will leave the pupil casing and the life cycle will begin again. The rusty spider wasp ranges in length from three quarters of an inch to one inch. It is reddish orange with iridescent blue to violet wings that contrast quite a bit against this overall rusty coloring. It is similar in appearance to the red paper wasp. However, the rusty spider wasp has a more elongated abdomen with dark coloring along its abdominal tergites. This gives the appearance of horizontal stripes. Additionally, the behavior between the two is completely different. Red paper wasps are rather calm and direct, while the spider wasp is somewhat spastic. It has jerky movements and often flicks its wings while it walks along on a surface. The rusty spider wasp can be found over much of the United States, mostly east of the Rocky Mountains. This map from iNaturalist shows where sightings of this wasp have been reported, with the highlighted states showing where sightings have been confirmed. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Oh, hello. I'm Randy from Randy's Natural World. I hope you enjoyed the video on... The Rusty Spider Wasp. Yes. Yes, that's it. Today I'm pretending to be a scientist. Maybe I'm doing research on a five o'clock shadow. I'm not sure. But that's neither here nor there. I'm hoping to speak to those of you who haven't subscribed yet. Here's a list of reasons why you should. It's free. You can't beat that price. Number two, quality content. Always quality content. Number three, YouTube allows unlimited subscriptions, so there's no reason not to. Anyway, number four, are you a procrastinator? There's no need to procrastinate. And I know what you're thinking, Randy, I'll subscribe when I get around to it. Well, here's your round to it right here. Round to it. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. A wise decision.